All right, welcome, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna get a little real for a second. That's actually good things. I'm all about trying to give you the realest content and value possible. Not talking about wins and the ups, unfortunately, but also just like the losses and downs. But before we get started, please consider giving us a like, thumbs up. Honestly, it would really mean a lot and we'll turn this frown upside down because it's been a tough past 30 days. Let's get into this. So at the timing of this, we just lost, I think, four deals back to back. I think that's revenue wise, probably 70 to 80. 5,000 US dollars in placements lost, which is not nice. It's not nice losing one, not nice losing two, definitely not nice losing four. But I want to share this with you because this is, you know, peak real time as close as it gets and just want to also just be raw and real. It's not all about wins, it's all about losses and what do you do when they happen to you, right? So we made a video about this several weeks ago about uh, just kind of how to deal with the raw emotions of it, like emotional psychological management, which is I think 90% of everything. But there's also tactical things that I can do every time I find myself in these situations and that's what I want to talk about in this video. So if you're going through a tough time, just cheer up, don't give up, keep going and your next win is just right around the corner and you just will never have any idea if you stop and give up right now. So take a deep breath and let's get into this. So when you lose a deal, it obviously sucks, it hurts, you don't want to work anymore, I totally get it, these are real human being emotions but there's a handful of things that I can think of that you can do and if you're doing most of these, fantastic and if you think some of these could be really really helpful for you, then you should totally do it and let me know how it goes. The first one, you always wanna leave on a professional and good note with the client. I know that you wanna get paid. I know you wanna get the position filled. I know you wanna officially break bread with your client, but not all deals that you pick up are gonna actually be filled by you. A lot of times they're gonna be filled by another competing agency or maybe internal TA, or maybe they pause or close the position, who knows? But there will be times where the last thing you wanna do is reach out to the client. You're like, hey, it makes no sense. I should just focus on getting new clients or servicing the current clients I have, like I totally get that, but a little bit goes a long way. And you just wanna make sure, first of all, before you get to that point, you wanna be professional, you wanna execute, you wanna always deliver high quality candidates, just leaving a good impression on the client overall since the agreement gets signed, since you start the relationship. That's really, really important. Doesn't make any sense to do things half-hearted and then to do things really, really well once you get fired or maybe the last week or two. Like you gotta be consistent from the beginning of the engagement. So number one, you always wanna be professional and always leave things on a good note. You always want to thank them, congratulate them no matter how much it kills you because that's what you should do if you are a true professional and you're taking the high road. Did you just start your own recruitment agency and are struggling getting your own clients? Are you thinking about starting your own agency but afraid to make the jump? Do you have your own clients but you're struggling to find the perfect cans fast? Do you have a full-time job and want to do recruitment part-time to make more money on the side and have no idea how to? If you answered yes to any of these questions, please consider joining our private community. It is a trust-based community where recruiters around the world can support, collaborative, and work together on placements all around the year consistently. In this community, you will directly have access to the real open jobs of my team and of our members, and you will also have the chance to access trainings, events, giveaways, and much, much more. If you are part of this community, I communicate and work with you as if you were on my own team, and I'll do whatever I can to do a placement together with your client or candidate. So if you're struggling to get your own clients or candidates and you want a way you can make sure you can be busy all year round by having access to many more open roles, then this is something you need to look into. This is open to people around the world and is open for recruiters in every industry and experience levels as we will always have a good number of variety of open jobs across sectors, markets, and industries. I'm really happy to say that within the first 30 days, we have already have a new member with minimal recruiting experience do his first placement that had a total fee of almost 30,000 US dollars and we are working hard to do many, many more this year. If you are interested and excited, there are only a limited number of spots open, so make sure you sign up quick at patreon.com slash recruiter Preston. If you have any questions, please reach out to me on LinkedIn, Instagram, or Discord. We can set up a time to chat. See you on the other side. The next thing you need to do is you want to follow up with the client, right? Perhaps they're hiring more on that team for that same role, or maybe they're, they're hiring different roles within that division. So let's say that you specialize in engineering and you're helping them find a mobile engineer, but then you see like 30 days later, they're hiring for a back-end full-stack engineer. You should totally 
follow up and be like, hey, my favorite client, do you need help? Happy to assist you in any way. If you leave and if you do the first half correctly, meaning always leave things on a good note, you're professional, you stay top of mind, they just have a wonderful experience, they can't say anything bad about you, there could be a good chance you might be able to re-pick it up, re-engage them sooner than you think. But it all starts with just making sure you're professional and always leaving things on a good note as much as possible. Now, the second thing is do the same thing, but not with the clients, but also with the candidates. Again, recruiting, staffing, it's a human relationship business, right? even though you might not be able to get your win now, there is a strong chance if you do things correctly, you might be able to get a win with your client or a candidate in the future. So we just talked about this with the client. What does it look like on the candidate side? So if the, you work with the candidate and you were not able to be successful to get him or her a job, but they felt that you had their best interest in mind, you were professional, they loved working with you, next time they look for a job, they'll reach out to you. On top of that, what if they have friends that are looking for jobs? They'll introduce you. But most importantly, what if that they introduce you to a new client, a friend of theirs is hiring and they're like, wow, Preston was an amazing recruiter. I know he works with other companies. Maybe he can give you a shot, right? Maybe your candidate gets a new job outside of your control, but then they crush it and they become a hiring manager, they're hiring. They might reach out to you. So the opportunities are endless. They're absolutely bountiful on the client side and the can side. And just going back up to the client side, they can also refer you to other founders. They can refer you to other candidates. They can refer you to other opportunities only if you leave things on a good note. So these first two points, one for the client side and one for the can side, are ones that I can't really stress enough. It's so easy just to kind of go for the shortcuts and go for the win right now and not have that patience on what one connection can do a couple months from now. A lot of people don't have that patience or stomach or bandwidth to wait that long. But if you understand that really the money in recruiting comes from relationships and the money in recruiting comes from just follow-ups, assuming that your relationships are good, that's powerful. That is something that you definitely do not want to underestimate and you want to take very, very seriously instead of always thinking about new candidates, always thinking about new clients, etc. So the most important thing is first, leave things really, really well on the client side, leave things really well on the candidate side, make sure that you're just known of being a great recruiter, a great partner, and all of those can just turn into amazing opportunities. The next thing you want to do is just follow up, right? And this can also apply to the cans, but follow up just periodically with clients. The money is in the follow-up. So follow up maybe once a month, every other month, or maybe if you feel like they're not immediately hiring or they're just not hiring at all, maybe once a quarter, right? It is probably a good time cadence to maybe think about when following up the client. You just never know if they are hiring because if they're hiring, they're not hiring, they just got a big account, they got sales, they're busy. Like you just have no idea Idea if you're not talking to them or part of the team, what the dynamics, how that business is going. And you can't just make a decision just based off the career page because a lot of positions on the career page are old, they're already expired, or the positions that they're hiring for are not even on the career page because they go through people like me first. They go through their referrals and affiliates first, knowing that most of the stuff that they get when they post things online are is just a bunch of noise or just hundreds of resumes and the team or the founder, they do not have the bandwidth nor the need to kind of go through all of those resumes. Not the greatest news, especially if you're a job seeker, but that's just how a lot of companies work behind the scenes. And a lot of times they just are too lazy or they just haven't gone around to updating their career page. So tip number three, again, is similar to tip number one and two, but you want to just follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. You can never not follow up. I've gotten clients where I followed up after three, four, five months. I've gotten a client where I followed up almost close to a year down the line. You have to also be intentional with the follow-ups. Don't just say, hey, it's Preston. Are you hiring? Hey, it's Preston. If their company made recent news, look for different ways that you can potentially reach out to them. If they post something on LinkedIn and you resonated with them, perhaps you connected them on social, they said something, they shared something, you know, use that as a hook to be like, wow, I really loved how you shared this video. Or hey, it's really cool that you said this. I agree with you. I disagree with you. By the way, hey, I had a wonderful experience working with you. Are you guys consider re-engaging us? Or I see that you're hiring now for X, Y, and Z. Do you need help? Let's talk about it, right? Always find ways to just follow up, but follow up intentionally. Don't just always spam them or ask them for nothing. Try to find a softer and more creative angle to start that conversation up again. If you don't have that, I would say every other month, once a quarter is definitely good time cadence that you can maybe follow or following up. Another thing is, what about your client stopped hiring, but then you noticed, wow, they're hiring a lot of other departments. What do you do? Well, assuming that you've did your job well and you have a really good relationship with the client, what's better than trying to reach out to those hiring managers directly is have your client make the introduction on your behalf. If they had loved working with you, if they had a good experience with you, regardless of whether or not they made a placement with you, they should be more than happy 
happy to make the intro, especially if they know that they have colleagues that are just struggling with hiring and they know that you can help. Don't be afraid to ask. If you never ask, you will never get. So the most important thing is always ask for that warm intro as much as possible. Periodically check the client's website, the client's job postings on LinkedIn or their career page to see what sort of activity is going on over there. If you have a client and the one hiring manager is not hiring, chances are you know they make an intro to you with a colleague that's looking to hire 20 positions. That's freaking amazing. So you definitely don't want to lose on those and don't want to snooze on that. Be proactive in terms of following up and seeing what sort of other opportunities with the client you just finished working with to see if maybe, hey, they can open up any doors for you. The next thing is what if like you have a lot of great candidates or a talent pool that you built for this role that just closed and you weren't able to place it? What do you do with those candidates? So one thing that you can do is try to find your rock star, you know, like the best of the best candidates that you've done with that search and perhaps use them to open up doors for other clients. Try to find clients hiring similar, if not the same thing, lead with that approach saying, hey, wow, I see that you're hiring for this role. We just came across this candidate who's amazing. Would you be open to chatting with them? And if they have a bite, try to get them on the call, pick up that role, talk about the agreement, send them the agreement, sign, you're off to the races again. So just because you lost the role, but you have candidates can still mean you're still in the game. You put in that hard work. You've already talked to some amazing talent. Might as well leverage that and see if it can open up more doors for you on the client side. So don't just you know let your candidates get aged and wither away in your database. Be proactive, use it, find other opportunities and see if you can open doors. The last but not least tip that which is the most important thing is don't let the bump derail you. On the contingency agency side or full-time side, we get paid based on placements. Yes, you can do retainers. Yes, you can do maybe kind of creative compensation, but for the most part, your bulk, your income is gonna come from those whopping one-time payments with placements. And there'll be months where you crush it. There'll be months where you're just struggling, but you can, you will never get through the drought. You will never get through the desert if you stop working. Always be consistent with giving the utmost focus to your current clients. Always be consistent reaching out to candidates and always be consistent reaching out to new clients and never let that stop. But most importantly, never let the emotional disappointment, the psychological disappointment derail what you need to do consistently every day and every week, every month. Because once you stop, and once you become more lax, you stop doing biz dev, you stop doing things one day, it's harder to do it the second day. Once you stop the first day and second day, it compounds and becomes even more difficult to do it the third day. You're now unpackaging and unraveling all the good habits that you've worked so hard to create. So be consistent and don't let one bump derail you. We cannot have wins every single day. There will be losses. You have to expect it. And if you think that you're gonna come into recruiting as an agent side or as a freelance or solo recruiter and think that you're gonna do deals every single month, it's just not going to happen. It's not realistic. The more question is, I'm gonna expect losses to happen. What am I gonna do so that I can minimize me feeling sorry for myself, getting discouraged, getting depressed, and get back into action? The people that are high performers shorten that time frame as much as possible. They avoid it, they mitigate, they minimize, whatever you have to do to know that it's gonna happen. You don't know when, but when it happens, what are you gonna do about it? Be proactive, be tactical with a lot of the things that we talked about with the client side, the can't side, follow ups. But most importantly, like what are you gonna do moving forward? You gotta keep pushing and never giving up. The market's not gonna feel sorry for you. No one else is gonna feel sorry for you. Take 20 seconds, lick your wounds, know what you have to do and get up and attack and engage all over again. Some of my biggest months were right after droughts. Some of my biggest wins were after weeks or over a month of just like struggling, struggling, struggling. When it rains, it pours in recruiting. But you just have to make sure that you get through the desert dry days or weeks or months and keep going because your day or week of it just pouring, wins after wins after wins, is literally right around the corner. I hope this video helped. If you wanna see more like it, please let me know. Always happy to make these. I really wish the best for you guys. Stay consistent, stay plugged in, and let's keep going and let's make this an awesome year despite all the bumps that we're going through. Whatever happened until now, doesn't matter. Think about today moving forward. You got almost half a year, over half a year left. Let's make 2024 count together and uh, appreciate it and give us a like and thumbs up and we'll see you on the next one.